asked you yesterday, Dylan Cease or Justin Verlander, who is your American League Cy Young? And you said, and I'm, I'm still let it breathe. Yeah, and I'm still undecided after last <laughs> night. Okay. You went in locked in like this is what you wanted to see, the pitch and matchup. And it was, for me, not the story of the game. They were both really good. But I don't think they were the story of the game when I came out of it. Huge W by the Chicago White Sox. That's two nights in a row. Late comebacks. Yoan Moncada sealing the win. But there's a couple of things. Three things to take away from this game last night outside of Justin Verlander and Dylan Cease obviously being phenomenal once again and giving their team a chance, even though Jose Altuve, Dylan Cease learned, you throw that little wrinkle 1-1 one, one, get me over slider and it's getting booked. Altuve will take you deep, but he also got picked off in a second. First thing I want to lock in is Alex Bregman, okay? We've chronicled so many third basemen in the game. Somebody's gotten on fire lately, and I, we talk so much about different guys' ability to hit. This is a guy that can hit anywhere in the top four in the order, but hold on a second here. Before I dive into the sound here, can I pause this real quick? I want to bring up his splits, Lucas, before we get into the sound of how he attacks hitting, if we can do that. Devin, bring that board up of his splits, okay? He got off to a tough start. First 95 games, he's hitting 238. On base was okay. Slug was decent. Weighted runs created plus. Two, still 22% better than your average big leaguer, but you know he's better than that. This is a perennial all-star. This is a guy who's battled for MVPs. This is a guy who hits in the top half of the lineup of one of the best lineups in baseball. Last 18 games, he has been on fire. 381, look at the weighted runs created plus. I mean, Ooh. 231. The reason I wanted to talk about Alex Bregman is we've gone from Donaldson and we come up on the skybox, J.D. Martinez, all different styles of hitting a baseball. And I think if I can unlock a kid at home to go outside in the garage and maybe something that another big leaguer says that's a, maybe just a little bit different than the next guy because it's that feel versus real. I don't think everybody truly does what they believe and what they tell themselves they're doing. And I think Alex Bregman, for me, explains his hitting style. I don't think he necessarily does what he's saying, but he tries to stay so square to the baseball. I want to get back in. Lucas, can we run? Let's run this sound right here of Alex Bregman. Listen to this. Well, for me personally, I never, ever think about rotation at all. I think I have two, two flashlights right here on my hip pointing that way. I have them on my shoulders, on my hips, on everything, my feet. And all I am trying to do, the only thing I look for is when I load, to have my hands travel high across my chest forward like this, the knob of the bat get out there past the inside part of the baseball. Wow, think about that real quick. Pause that real quick. Think about what he's saying, because I believe it 100%, because you're playing to the big parts of the field, okay? We see so many times when we're doing these Dr. D rows or you're looking at a guy struggle, it's the front shoulder, it's the front hip that goes flying. For other guys, they could throw that front hip, but this stays square and they stay through the baseball. There's all different ways to attack it. But to think of keeping this front shoulder locked in on that pitcher, this front hip locked in on that pitcher, flashlights going this way, and almost letting your swing take you out is a pretty phenomenal way to think about it for the young kids at home. So it might be something you want to try. So let's dive in. Was he doing it? This was one of the at-bats of the game against Dylan Cease. Heater away, 97 take. Nasty slider. He's 2-0. This was interesting to me because he gets a weak swing and a miss. Pause this. Weak swing and a miss on a 2-0 pitch right there on a slider. Then he overpowers him with a heater. I think he got a little too aggressive right here and should have respected Alex Bregman's kind of back of his baseball card. I thought slider was eventually the pitch to get him out of this inning. Still won nothing. He wanted to dominate him, run this. Went right after him. You go right after a big league hitter in a good spot right there. I thought a nice nasty slider probably puts Bregman away, but you talk about 
him staying square and pulling his barrel across his chest. We'll show a quick side angle here, front angle. Look at that. Run that back real quick one time. He's doing exactly that. Everything's trying to stay as square as possible. Watch him pull this left arm across his chest. I mean, that's pretty cool. Hours upon hours of work in the cage to come up with something that works for him. Okay, I got to give Josh Harrison and Dylan C some love. I'm a big stickler on the fundamentals. I know they're glanced over in spring training, but they matter. They help you win ball games. And last night in a big spot, timing play? How many times do you see that? And you learn that Dylan Cease was a former shortstop, so you know he's a good athlete, and you probably picked up in spring training that he's got quick feet, and in a big spot, we could pull this off. Carlos Zambrano, Chicago Cubs, mm. was the one guy, run that back for me real quick, that I could actually put this play on. And what you'll get is maybe Josh Harrison looks at him, and maybe it's the left ear lobe. And maybe Dylan C sees it and goes, all right, I got gotcha. you. Run this, 1,000, 1,001, 1,002. Bang, Jose Altuve picked off at second base. Just the fundamentals of the game. And then he tried to put it on again last night. And if Josh Harrison catches the ball, I don't think they get him at second base, Mauricio Dubon. But he had it again. These are not big leads. Another timing play. He just missed it. So I just thought it was cool last night for a team that has kind of been criticized fundamentally defensively for them to put the timing play on multiple times last night with Josh Harrison. Okay, last guy. Liam Hendricks came in last night and is one of the kind of biggest draws in the game when he comes in. He gets you fired up and he sat with us during the All-Star game. Take a listen to this. Your mindset and your mentality, at what point did a coach walk up to you and go, I think you might be better served at the back end of the bullpen? Well, I never really had this mindset until I moved to the bullpen. I think really? when I moved to the pen, it kind of unlocked that inner bulldog. He gets me going. He, had, he would annoy me if I was on the opposition. <laughs> he would fire me up if, it, if, if I was on his team, okay? And it's kind of been a tale of two seasons for him as well. Can we bring the board up real quick? before we show Josh Naylor hitting a bomb right there. Okay, take a look at this. First 15 games, nine, and uh, nine out of 12 save opportunities. ZRA was 4.7. Guys are hitting them. OPS is north of 800. Last 27 games, 18 of 18. No one's touching them. OPS of 502. I show the Jose Altuve we can dive back in because in a 1-0 spot right there, in a 4-3 game, he gives him a heater middle-middle. That was not the case in the beginning of the season. His heater was getting really tuned up. And then last night, what does he do in a big spot? He's feeling it. 97 four seamer right down your throat. Yuli, I don't think you can catch up to 98. I'm giving you that. And then he went to work on Jordan Alvarez. It was heater in, nasty slider off of it. I mean, it's a huge spot. 0-1, bounce slider coming again. Filthy. Run that back for me real quick. Roflo, am I heavy? Yes, you are. Okay, go. Bang. <laughs> People got to see that, though. Fall off the table. Jordan's really got no chance in this at bat, and then they get fired up. So, great win by the White Sox. Bregman rakes. Little fundamentals with Josh Harris. I love